Hey everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. Today I'm going to talk to you about a theme that I'm hearing a lot recently, this idea of wasted time. And I have so many different responses to that, but this feeling is so widespread and I think it deserves some attention. When I hear people talk to me about wasted time in their life, it is coming from a place of grief. They're grieving time that they can't get back because time is finite. And when we spend a period of time presenting ourselves as someone we're not, believing things that we no longer believe, giving our energy and our time to relationships that no longer serve us, we don't get that time back. And in a lot of cases, we carry the scars of that into the rest of our lives. So not only have we given time to these things, but then we are healing from these things for a while specific to people who come out later in life. They feel like there are parts of their lives that they can never get back, and they feel this immense grief and confusion sometimes about how could they have not known this about themselves before? How can they move forward without being angry about their past, without being frustrated about the fact they didn't know this about themselves before when so many people around them did. They feel robbed of opportunities that other people had that they feel like now they're kind of too old for. And yeah, we talk about things like second adolescence and we talk about things like you're never too old to fall in love and you're never too old for new experiences. And, and all of that is true and most people realize that it's true, but it doesn't take away that feeling of wasted time. There's a couple of parts to this. The first one is grief. Grief is hard. Grief is a process. It is never a one and done thing. And it's something that everyone has to do differently depending on who they are. When you experience grief of time you can't get back, it's also going to bring up other pieces of grief that you maybe haven't processed from your past. And that can be hard because then you're compounding the grief on top of grief on top of grief. That process can sometimes maybe take a little bit longer depending on how much grief you sort of shoved down and not processed. And I do encourage most people when they're experiencing grief to talk to a professional. I also want to be very clear and honest about the fact that I am very aware of how embarrassing it can be for some people to talk to a professional about things like grief, especially unprocessed grief, especially things like the potential to talk about time you feel like you've wasted. Sometimes we have to do a little bit of work before we're ready to go in and talk to a therapist about some of these things. Sometimes it takes time for us to get to a place where we're ready to speak to a therapist about the things we need to process. Sitting with your grief isn't the worst thing in the world. Allowing your grief in the longer term to stop you from moving forward is also not the best thing. And I know your next question is going to be how long is too long and how long is enough time? And that's not something I can answer for you because it's different for everybody. But when we're talking about the grief of time that you can't get back, one of the things you have to be aware of is the time in the now that you're not able to live because you are grieving the time that has passed. So when you're thinking about the time that you didn't know who you were or the time that you spent in relationships that did not serve you or didn't match who you know yourself to be, and you think about the ages or the years that you aren't going to be again, if you spend all of your present time mourning them, that is more time that you're not going to get back. And there's a function for that. There's a purpose for that. But I need you to follow me on this. Ready? When you take that time that you have now and spend it looking backward, you are doing that because you don't know how to move forward. Say you spent your time thinking that you're straight and you live your life thinking you're straight. Say you're a woman and you marry a man and you realize that you're actually not straight. You realize you're a lesbian and you leave the marriage and you look back at those years that you could have been dating women and you could be now in a long-term relationship with a woman. And you look at those years gone by with sadness and with grief and sort of with loneliness because you don't know how to restart necessarily. And when that loneliness and sadness and grief stops you from continuing to move on, that is actually an internal mechanism stopping you from moving on because of fear, because you don't know what comes next. And so that grief holding on to that past that is no longer attainable for you and no longer reachable for you is your way of not letting go of that safety, of that piece of you that you recognize and remember, no matter how good or bad it actually was for you. It's your way of keeping it with you and keeping yourself in the known because the future is so unknown and that piece can be so scary. 
and that's understandable. When I see people ask these questions on social media, like what do you do about time that you've wasted or time that you can't get back? And people unfortunately will judge the asker based on their age. That infuriates me so much. So say somebody who's in their 30s asks, what do I do about all this wasted time? And somebody in their 50s says, oh my gosh, you have so much time left. Think about me, I'm in my 50s, blah, blah. Well, what does somebody in their 60s do when they read that? Or someone in their 40s do? Or someone else in their 50s do? What about someone in their 70s? Like, you cannot put an age limit on what it means to have wasted or not wasted time. When we think about time lived as wasted time, we are shortchanging our own human experience because every moment that we live is accumulated into who we are. Okay, so I know most of you are saying at this point, that's great, Kelly, so it's not a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. But what do I do about the fact that I still feel like I wasted my time? Practical application, here we go. We're gonna do a little bit of CBT work on it, right? Because whenever we have thoughts that are not necessarily grounded in fact, but they feel true, this is what we do about them. We start with the thought, and the thought is, I wasted my time. We're gonna see how much objective truth there is to that. All right, we're going number one. Is there substantial evidence for this thought? Is there substantial objective evidence that you have wasted time? Is there? Write it down. Is there substantial evidence contrary to that thought? Write it down. Am I attempting to interpret this situation without all the evidence? It's kind of a yes or no. But this is the question that really gets into it for me because the answer to that question is almost always gonna be yes in this situation. You don't have all of the evidence because you don't know what would have happened if you had made different choices. At any point along any path that you've taken ever in your life, if you had made a different choice, what might have happened? You won't ever know. I am not a person who believes that there's necessarily right and wrong choices as far as like paths to take in our lives because every choice we make is just a choice and then we live with the repercussions of that choice and then we make another choice and then we live with that choice and that's how we live our lives. And because of that, there can't be right and wrong things for us to do with our lives because we'll never know what would have happened if we had gone a different way. So instead of spending our time wondering what would have happened if we had gone a different way, we take the lessons that we learned from the way that we went and we apply them to our lives now and let it enrich what we do from here. And these next two may or may not apply to the thought that you're trying to process, but I'm going to throw them out there anyway because you might use it some of the time in the future. And that is, what would a friend think of the situation? Really, that's just an exercise of getting outside of your own mind and imagining looking at it from an outside perspective. You know how you feel because you've lived your life and you've seen your choices and you've been inside of your head and felt your emotions. And you've been inside of your head, heard your thoughts. You've been in your body and felt your emotions. A friend hasn't. They may have walked the whole thing with you, but they don't live inside of your head. What would they think of the thought that you've wasted this time? Would they point out positive things that have happened that you didn't think of? Would they agree that you've wasted your time? What would they say? Next is, if I looked at the situation positively, would it change how I feel about it? I like this question because... The more negatively we look at our present circumstances, the more negatively we will look at our future circumstances. Because if we look at it from a negative place, no matter how positive we look at our future options, we're still going to be looking at it from a deficit, right? So if we look at it from, okay, I am where I am, what do I get to do in the future now because of where I am? That puts us on a different plane than, okay, well, what do I have to do now to take myself out of the hole that I've dug for myself? That is just one tool that you can use to challenge some of these negative thoughts that you might have about the idea of having wasted some of this time. And I would also go back to that statement I made in the beginning about having to recognize and feel some of that grief. You do deserve to acknowledge your emotions. Your feelings are valid. And if you are mourning a time that you are not going to get back, you have the right to mourn that. You also have the right to spend your time mourning it 
and move forward at the same time. Because grief and mourning do not have to stop you from moving forward unless you need it to for a season. And if you need it to for a season, then you need it to. That means it's part of your journey, which also means then that's not wasted time, right? I don't know how any of us would ever be able to look back at our lives and point to what was wasted time and what wasn't. I know that it can feel like it sometimes, and I know that it can feel like you're maybe standing still or moving backwards at times. The reality of life is that we never know what's around the corner, and we never know what in five years we're going to think when we look back at today, because we don't know what the next five years brings. And because of that, staying connected to a past that no longer serves us by continuing to mourn and grieve it past the time where it's beneficial to us does not serve us into the future. It's okay to grieve and to be sad about time that you spent not living your fullest life and not living into the truest version of you. It's also okay to look at that time and remember that everything happens in the time that you needed it to happen in. You can't do things until you're ready because change does not stick if you do it before you're ready. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all next time. And until then, take care of yourselves and each other.